Right, so here we are back uh, with Lab 3-2 from Practical Malware Analysis. We are doing the essentially second half of this lab, uh, but before I start, I wanted to, I had some questions that I left off in the last video that I want to clear up. Uh, first, when using the run dll32.exe utility, we talked about in order to run a, uh, try to install a DLL or run a DLL on Windows, the book said the solution to doing this was running you know the utility with the lab DLL that we're given as a target and with the install a export function from that DLL as a second parameter as you know with the run 32 dll.exe utility you have to give it a target uh, target export function to use the question was is why did they use why does the book say to use install a uh, as that function uh, I could not find out why except that I tried all the export functions as parameters and none of them seemed to work besides install A uh, in terms of installing the DLL and seeing the registry changes that we saw in the last video. Uh, so based on that I'm going to say that the book essentially was you brute force and just use all of these as parameters and then see what works and the one that worked was install A function. Next, before we get started, I have reverted to an, a different uh, VM. I'm still using Windows XP. However, uh, with this VM, this has Internet Explorer version 8 versus version 6. I did this because with version 6, I had a lot of trouble downloading some of the network tools that we use, especially a paid DNS, as well as NatCat or Wireshark. Uh, and it was much more smooth in Internet Explorer uh, Eight than it was in six, and so I, I have the exact same setup here, uh, just with another VM, all the tools on it, um, and just in order to get the tools. So if you are having issues with six, go to uh, eight, and then again, this is also available from Windows, uh, just like the other VM was. So to get started, we left off uh, seeing that looking at the uh, the registry. Uh, comparison from Redshot, which I don't have up, uh, we saw that using this tool, we saw that the DLL had installed a service or what we thought was a service uh, and the name of that was IPRIP uh, something along the lines of this and the all the values were added uh, standard values were added to the registry in order to uh, support a service and the path to that service was actually the executable called svchost.exe. Um, and so svchost.exe is a generic uh, process in Windows that is used as a container for running services. Uh, and so when we run this service, it, we, should, we will not see lab 30302 DLL. We will see, hopefully, uh, an instance of FCC host.exe running, um, and then that's what will, assuming you know at this point we're guessing that it will run a some bit of the malware of the DLL, <clears throat> uh, and so to get into it, I'm actually not going to run or set off the malware in this video because it takes too long. I'm just going to go through the steps of what I did, uh, and so here we are. We're going to try to start a service. We are going to use the net start. Uh, utility from Windows. Again, this is just the Windows command tool for starting a service that you know by name. And so it's that, that's this command right here, uh, net start and then IPRP, which is the service name that we pulled out of the uh, registry value comparison that we looked at in the last video. Um, and so before doing that, I pulled up a paid DNS. Um, I started a paid DNS uh, and I pointed it towards my other Ubuntu machine uh, that's running inet sim and so I had that running uh, in this VM right here uh, again I just made sure that the uh, my Ubuntu machine was actually running with this IP address and I just started inet sim up uh, I also kept process explorer open in the background um, and then so to actually when you're ready uh, you run this command and immediately you see the these two lines start up which if you remember these strings were both found in the DLL itself as well as in the registry values that we saw for descriptions of the services and so it makes sense that we started the service and then the description of the service is shown to the screen um, <clears throat> so when we do this uh, the next thing the book mentions 
to, to try to find this running in Process Explorer is uh, we're going to use a feature of Process Explorer, uh, a find handler DLL right here. That brings up this window. And you can see I just searched for lab 03-02 string. We get three uh, return instances. Two we see are uh, dealing with the PE view. And since I have PE view open and I'm looking at the DLL, that's what that's for. Uh, but the first instance, which is what we want and makes sense, is we see that process SVC host at exe uh, is referencing this lab, uh, essentially lab 03-02 DLL. Um, and so now that we have this, we can use the process ID that the search returns and find which instance is FCC host that the malicious DLL is running under. Uh, and essentially it's this one because our process ID here is 1048 and we see it over here in 1048. Um, and again, this makes sense that there's multiple instances of SVC host running because this is just a container uh, you, t you know, program for services running on Windows. Um, so we click on this, and you can see this ran and ended already, but all the information is still there. Uh, so you click on this, and then you can do view, uh, lower pane view, DLL, and then all the DLLs that this process executable relies on um, will come up in this lower pane. It is in alphabetical order, uh, so you can scroll down and find lab 03-02.dll, our DLL. When you click on that, um, you see it brings up you know, the image and the strings. Um, going through the strings, we see that it has all the strings that we originally saw in PE view, looking at the DLL, as well as in the registry. Um, the point of doing this, uh, I'm assuming from the book, is just to verify that we are running the DLL that we think we're running, and that it is running in this instance as SCC host. Um, which is what we expect, but you know this is you know this is truly what we see, um, and so I looked at that while I was running, uh, and then after a while I kept a paid DNS for a while for I think like a couple minutes. Um, I'm not sure what point the book says. Sixty seconds, the malware uh, beacons out. I'm not exactly sure um, when this beacon that will hold, and we can look. Um, so this DNS started at nine. This the paid DNS program started at nine fifty-five. Um, I assume I started the service immediately afterwards, and then at nine fifty-seven we get the uh, a paid DNS picks up a domain request. Um, so just a few minutes after uh, starting the service, um, and I this the point of this is that this malware doesn't immediately begin out. There was a little bit of a delay on it. Um, the cool thing is, is that the domain that the, the paid DNS picks up is practicalmalwareanalysis.com, which is the notorious, you know, just malware URL that is used in this book to represent a malicious uh, website uh, or target URL. Um, and so that's good that it came up, and that also means that some sort of traffic was uh, rerouted to INET SIM uh, over on our Ubuntu machine. Uh, and so in this uh, lab, I did not use Netcat or Wireshark. Um, you can use Netcat all the same as INET SIM, except in Netcat you have to specify like what ports or services that you want to listen on. I like INET SIM in that default it you know covers almost all of the services you can think of, um, and then it logs it and it's a more cleaner report and and cert gives you more detailed information in my opinion. Uh, and so we go over here into INET SIM, um, and so I stopped in you know, INET SIM, and if we go to reports, we see that it did give us a report, which, which is good. We look at the report, and uh, INET SIM essentially has logged an HTTP connection request, a, a, you know, an HTTP GET message type for the URL practicalmalwareanalysis.com um, with the file served at HTML. Um, which is really cool because this is exactly what the book wants us to find. This is the malware beaconing out uh, and requesting this file. Um, this next little line you see under INET SIM is just, it's saying that because of how INET SIM works, the point of it is to, you know, return files to uh, the malware to keep it running or keep it going. In this case, we don't know exactly what type of file or HTML file that the malware is requesting. Um, and so we didn't do any configurations, but by default, INET SIM will return just a, a standard HTML file. Uh, and so that's what it's saying, it returned that. Now if we go out 
of the report, we can also look at the services log. Uh, look at the service log. We get these. We get the same information, but a lot more detailed. Uh, and so, starting it, it shows us uh, every kind of line of the HTT message that we saw. Um, you know, it first says we got to connect. It's got a connect request, and this receive label shows the actual uh, contents of the HTT get message. And so you're seeing it's asking for the serve.html file. Um, the user agent is our Windows machine, which we know already. It's you know uh, Windows X XP. Um, we see that the host is practical malware practical malware analysis.com. Um, Right, and then we get info, um, which is just another type of, of logging information that, or this label is just another type of logging data that INETSIM will do. And so this is just saying that it got that request and now it's sending back the fake file, um, the fake HTML file. And then it shows us exactly what it sends, the HTT message. And so we know 200 OK is just a generic HTT response. Um, and it has all the appropriate headers of a real HTT response. Uh, along with the sample file. Uh, and then lastly, the INETSIM also just has another type of a statistic uh, log recording, and this is the same information that we kind of see in the report, um, and it's just like a summary of what I just went over. Uh, so that was good. We saw exactly what we needed to see in uh, INETSIM. Um, I believe this is it for this lab. Uh, the points being to catch the network indicators that I just mentioned, um, installing, getting the service to run uh, by using the net start command, uh, see, seeing also the domain in the page DNS as well as doing the exploration of Plus Explorer and, and finding the instance of the SVC host uh, program that is actually running our DLL um, and, and eventually beaconing out. So yep, there's lab 3-2, uh, the end of it. Um, all right.